everybody and welcome to Cabaret Secrets. My name's Gary Williams. Today's guest started playing guitar at nine years old and by the time he'd graduated from Trinity College, he'd won the Henley Festival Prize for Jazz. Since then, he's performed with artists as varied as Claire Martin, Girls Aloud and Michael Ball. He's played with the John Wilson Orchestra, the Ronnie Scott's Big Band and is the leader of the Len Phillips Big Band, Joe Pettit. Welcome to Cabaret Secrets. Did you ever imagine when you were at college, when you were studying, that you would end up running a big band all on your own? Never in a million years would I have thought that that would happen. I don't know if it's fate or uh, if I've done something to upset someone. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it just sort of fell on my lap, really, in the end. I didn't go looking for it. Len Phillips decided that it was time for him to retire, and he looked around the band, and for one reason or another, he decided that uh, he should pass the band over to me to keep it going, and that's what I've been doing ever since, about five years now. How was that? Because can be a bit tricky in managing the temperaments of hard and old jazz musicians. Yeah, yeah, and they all look, you, you, you don't know who, who, which way to face, really. You've got an audience sitting there with all their arms crossed looking at you going, who's this young And You turn around to the band for a bit of support and they're all looking at you going, you've got the tempo wrong, boy. You know, it's, uh, there was no, no, no friends, really, nowhere to look. Steep learning curve. Yeah, very much so. Um, but uh, it's, it's been great, been good, been nice to get feedback from both sides and people have been really supportive. I mean, what was it like when you first, when you got the job and you're standing there in front of the band at the first rehearsal? It must have been terrifying, no? Or what was it? Was it very different yeah, to the, playing in the band? The very first concert that we did, I got a call. I was at Kilimanjaro Airport I got, on my way back from my honeymoon. Len Phillips on the phone saying, boy, you're going to have to take the gig. The doctor said I'm not allowed to do the next gig. I landed and I think it was two days later, there I was. I had Dennis Lotus on the bill and we were doing a concert to 600 people and they weren't our usual fans. It was a sort of a, a, a some kind of society gig. So, you know, they I don't think they knew who Len Phillips was, let alone who Joe Pettit was in front of the Len Phillips big band. And then I've got Dennis Lotus and all his years of experience looking at me for getting things right. It was, it was terrifying, absolutely terrifying. Has it made you more sensitive to the pressures that the leaders are under? Do you know, after I started running the band... About a year in, I did my first gig with uh, Ray McVeigh's band, the Glenn Miller Orchestra, and uh, I've never enjoyed a gig so much as playing with that band that day when I just sort of watched this guy have to deal with all the things, all the problems, and uh, I couldn't be more helpful now when I'm on gigs, I think. I'm the guy that wants to help you carry all your gear in and says, oh, well done, I thought you did a great job, and oh, they were a difficult crowd, weren't they? <laughs> it's lovely to see somebody else doing the work, and I just appreciate playing the bass. And what about entertaining the audience as well? Because, you know, talking between songs, I mean, you're sort of coming from the realm, you're trained as a jazz musician, and you're sort of going from the realms of that to sort of Mr Showbiz wearing sparkly jackets, maybe. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you've got to do links, you've got to keep entertained, maybe tell a few jokes. This, that wasn't in your original uh, job description, was it? No, it wasn't, it wasn't. Um, it, it, yeah, I have to remember that on, on the... Our appearances, the main thing that people are there for is the music. They're not there for a, a full-on show. They're there because they love the big band sound. And sometimes I've got a little bit carried away and come up with this great thing that's good to talk about. And I think, oh, don't I look great doing this? And there's a really good you know, bit at the end of it. And even a, a, a few of the people in the audience have come up to me and said, Joe, you're, you're ever so good, you're ever so good, but do remember we're here for the music. You know? and, it, and it's true, you've got to remember what, what, what the point of, of what we're there for is. Um, I try to keep the links fairly short but the main thing that I've noticed really from sort of working with other people like Len Phillips and working with yourself as well is is you've got to be as natural as you can be when you're on stage because they see straight through it if you can go up there if you can take the mickey out of yourself a little bit if you can you know if you can mistakes are fine if things are a little bit you know not 100 percent obviously things usually are with the Len Phillips big band but if you can keep things uh you, you know as natural as possible and and not try and be somebody that you're not that way, they, they seem to like it. I guess if you're not a very nice person, you have to pretend to be somebody else, but hopefully I, can, <laughs> I haven't got to worry about that so much. You use uh, singers from time to time. Is, is there a still a, a big appeal amongst the audiences that come to see the big band for Cabaret? I and mean, what is it that they're looking for? What is it that they want? When we put a cabaret show on, we part. We usually use it as part of uh, a longer stay at somewhere. So we're here for four nights playing every night. And what we try to bring is just something that's not purely for the music that night. Um, so we're going to do three sets tonight, um, and the middle set will be a cabaret where we're hoping to sort of give them just, just that little bit of that combination of comedy and 
chat that gets you you're thinking about other things as well as just listening to the music it just breaks up the breaks up our event really um we've had various diff- various singers have come along and not just singers we've had comedians instrumentalists um and what we what we really want is not somebody that's just coming along as a singer. We've got great singers in the band. Uh, we've got Matthew Ford and Eleanor Keenan with us at the moment. Don't come much better. Yeah, yeah. Well, so we're not we're not we're not looking for another singer to come along. We're looking for somebody to come along and give us a show. Because the, those two singers, they're here. They're, they're working up for this week as band singers. Yeah. It's a few uh, tunes from the band for people to dance to or enjoy to listen to, and then the singer will get up and do a tune or two, and yeah. then sit down again. We're talking now about. A show. Yeah. The singers that are here in, in the band, they'll say no more than thank you very much, perhaps, at the end of, of, of saying something. I'll be doing the chat, introducing them. Um, and they're very much just a set piece. So they'll sing a tune made famous by Bobby Darin or a, a tune made famous by Ella Fitzgerald, just as you would hear it on the record. Um, but what we're hoping that tonight you're going to bring, Gary, and what other people that we've booked in the past bring um, are... A, a full routine where you know the the, the links are, are well thought out that you move from one tune to the next that within the tunes there are bits where you can break it down and, and give some some do a bit of business with the audience you can walk around the room you can do do your thing tell tell a gag whatever it is maybe within one of the numbers there'll be something that's that's happening uh where you you sing a different version or you've got a medley all these different things that, that make it a, much more of a, a show. You know, uh, you, you'll have the spotlight on you, the lighting can change. All of these elements will come in to make it a very much a more polished 45, 50-minute production almost. Is it hard to find singers to do this? It's really hard. Um, I think one of the main problems for us is that I think there are, there, there are a number of people that can do a cabaret show, but to do it with a big band, um, the, the, the biggest hurdle is having the music. Um, it, nobody has the uh, the outlet for it anymore like they used to. You know, there were bands playing up and down the country and all the mecca clubs and all the all the palais and everywhere. There were big bands playing everywhere. So everybody had a, a, a pad of big band music and they worked it and they had people arrange these things for them and they could use it. Whereas now, where there's so little opportunity to use this stuff, nobody's got a pad of stuff to use with a 16-piece orchestra. You might have find you can get a singer that's great with a five-piece or a nine-piece or they've got what works on a cruise ship. No one's got the stuff for this size of band and and that makes it really really tricky to find people really because we've got to use the band otherwise you know we mm. have a very unhappy audience coming to a big band concert where only four people are playing at any time mm. Mm. have you could you give the people listening to this any sort of do's and don'ts things which the cabaret artists that you've hired of or, or whether it's comedians or singers things which they've done i'm thinking of one now last time i did one for you it was too long wasn't it it was a bit long yeah yeah, yeah. and, and, I, and much of a good thing. yeah and I, yeah i put the set together i sort of i thought i'd timed it right but i didn't factor in all the chat and i mean i probably ended up doing about an hour over an hour or something where we should have been more like maybe 45 minutes is probably enough yeah i mean the timing thing can, can be a problem um I think my biggest problem is that when you've got this many musicians and you've got to run a rehearsal, it's tough. You've got to get through a lot of material. The the stuff needs to be well arranged in the first place. The singer needs to know that stuff. We can't be there to rehearse for the singer. We've got to be there to rehearse to make sure we get the band working exactly right. If we've got a, an hour or an hour and a half rehearsal for a 45-minute show, that, you know, even if we didn't stop to talk about anything, we'd only be able to run everything twice. That gives you some idea of Maximum, the time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So so we we've, we need to be able to go, right, that's going to work. Is that OK for you? Yeah, good, and just move on to the next thing. And on that, I've learned, and I was thinking this today when we rehearsed, that I mean, the rehearsal went very smoothly today, but it... Part of that is because I just don't do tunes which are going to take a lot of rehearsal. There are some tunes, no matter how well they're arranged, they've got tempo changes, There's some you know there's some really tricky parts, which, though the band could do great, like any music, they're going to need a, a, a two or three goes at a little passage or a little look at this, the ending a few times. We, there just isn't really the time. And if and if I want to put that in a set, I'm going to make a rod for everybody's back. And really, it's just better thinking, you know what, I could do this other tune, which is a much straightforward play. I'm going to do that because it's going to stop everybody getting stressed. Yeah, I, I, I think you're exactly right. If you're too ambitious with what you're trying to pull off, you probably won't pull it off. And even if it's going to be great, if it works, it's going to be amazing. But is it even going to be that amazing to the audience? You'll think it's brilliant <laughs> yes. because it did all these clever things, but half the people in the audience won't. And they'll just see everyone looking a bit nervous and the musicians, all you know, their eyes bulging out of their heads 
kids and you sort of turning around looking fearfully at them and and quite possibly they'd have preferred it to be much more straightforward you know simple is good if you if you've got you know two days of three rehearsals a day to sort stuff out like you might get for a you know your big prom moment then great go for it but the, the reality of the situation is that you're only going to get a quick run with a band and the band are all going to be looking at you snarling at you going you know come on what's this guy doing you know I've got places to go people to see I've turned up I've learned how to play my instrument and you know what's all this going on they want you to know exactly what it is that you're going to be doing they want to know you've got to know what the tempos are you know gone are the days when the cabaret artist turns up with his own MD and, and, the, and their musical director knows exactly what all the charts are and can run it for them you need to know you need to know exactly how you end your things who's going to be doing directing what how fast do you want it you know, it, it's vocal cues, the links as yeah, well. If yeah. I want you to count something off at a particular point, it's like a little script. I've mm-hmm. got to put that on a running order for you. That when I say this, that's when you start to count. Yeah, and I I, I need a part to, to conduct from. Always speak to whoever's going to be conducting for you. Work out what they're happy to conduct from, but they need something. Otherwise, they're just standing there. The whole band's looking at the conductor, saying, "We thought you were going to slow down there." And you know, the conductor's looking back, saying, "Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm conducting from thin air." So mm. yeah, and, and and on that, I used to. I used to give uh, band leaders the the whole score, the complete score. And some people would ask for that, which if if anybody's not familiar, it's this huge tome of a thing, you know, with uh, so much information on more than you need, really. Uh, I notice you're happy to work off the Alto One part. Yeah, well... If, you, if you've got all the time in the world to do a proper rehearsal of a new piece of music and you want to be looking through the score and saying, right, trumpets, what are you playing there? Could we just alter this? I see you've got a G-sharp on that bar and you're playing a B-flat there and mm. this, that and the other. It's really nice to have the whole score, but in the reality of it, you fit you know, about four bars on a page that way and you spend the whole time looking down, turning pages instead of looking up and conducting and worrying about anything musical. Mm. So if you've got all the time in the world for a big rehearsal, then sure, get that A3 tome out of, of a score. Otherwise, a piano part with uh, lyrics on lyric cues is quite nice and the odd bit of brass that might need conducting. Um, but if that doesn't exist, for me, you know, I just need a part so that I can see what the bar numbers are, a few phrases so that I don't get lost, and then I know exactly when I need to slow things down and speed things up and stop things or whatever. What is the future looking like for big bands, do you think? I mean, is it a case of we're all just holding on for dear life? I mean, the audiences is getting older and older. We've got to be honest. I mean, do you think the Len Phillips big band and other big bands are going to be around in 10 years' time? Uh it does look that way from the outset, doesn't it? You look at this ageing audience, but if I speak to people that are a bit older than me, maybe 10 years older than me, they say that people were saying exactly the same thing 10 years ago to them. Um, and if you look at the people that are here this evening, yes, there are some people in their 90s, there are some very old people, but if you look at the average age of people, I'd say they're about 70. And if you're 70, then you were out... In 50 years ago, you were out in the 60s listening to stuff. That's not when big bands were big. Big bands were big in the 40s and the 50s. Uh, you know, my, my dad grew up on the Kinks and the Beatles and the Who, um, but now he likes putting on Frank Sinatra and he likes putting on Count Basie. You know, I'm not saying that people become huge enthusiasts like perhaps they did when they went out to the Palais every week, but if you grew up in the 60s, it's a good chance you now like big band music. I think it's something that people do grow into as much. I'm not sure that they're growing into it fast enough. We could do with more growing into it in their numbers more, but I don't think that it's as bad as the initial you know, look of the situation might suggest. Do you think young singers like Michael Bublé and Robbie Williams have helped? Yeah, they don't do any harm at all. You know, they certainly get it back on the radio. They get people thinking about it. You know, I mean, even even that Rod Stewart album, for me, it's not my cup of tea. Sorry, Rod. But, um, you, you know, but it's getting people listening to that great American songbook, all those tunes that people need to know in order to really enjoy it. You know, people still like to hear tunes that they know, don't they? So if you get Rod Stewart singing, uh, a, a, you know, a load of Cole Porter tunes and then you hear those same Cole Porter tunes being played or sung somewhere else, then you, you, you've got a bond with them that, that maybe people had 60 years ago but don't have now, and those bonds need to be built back up again. So, yeah, it's really helpful, the, the, the newer guys that are, are recording those tunes. Do you feel under pressure to kind of contemporise the sets with this band? I mean, try and slip a few sort of modern tunes in which have been arranged for big band and if you do that is you know you're worried that you're going to alienate the core audience that just want to hear glenn miller and so on i don't really think about it i I don't feel a need for it 
Um, nobody's saying to me, oh, Joe, I'd really like to hear, you know, I mean, there was that, uh, what was it? Paul Anker. Paul Anker's, what was it called? Uh, Rock Swings. Rock Swings, it? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was a good album, you know, there were some great arrangements there, but I don't hear anybody saying to me, Joe, could you play a swing version of Wonderwall? You know, it, the, the, the problem with that is that, yes, those tunes have got an affinity for some people, but it's not the people that are coming to a big band concert. So nobody at the big band concerts particularly enjoys the swing treatment of, of a Nirvana tune because... They didn't grow up listening to Nirvana. They don't know the Nirvana tune in the first place. It's just, oh, well, oh, that's nice. That's a new piece of music. So that, that hasn't really happened for us. If I was doing, a, you know, a load of concerts where I needed to go and play to, to school audiences or something, you know, where, where, yeah, that's great then. You can take uh, music and repertoire that younger people know and you can say, hey, and this is how it sounds with a big band. Fantastic. But I think that my audience, being an older audience, that's, that would be missed. You just recorded a new album with the band. We did indeed, yeah. Uh, we recorded it. When was it? It was last year we recorded it. It takes ages to get all this stuff together, doesn't it? And uh, and then it was released in March this year. We put it together with uh, the late, great David Jacobs. Um, he wrote the liner notes for it and uh, helped put together the, the set list for it. Was it called Our Kind of Music? It's called Our Kind of Music. Our Kind of Music, yeah. yeah. Bless David. Yeah, yeah. He, he worked with us, actually through you, Gary. Um, we did a few concerts with David over the years uh, that he would present for us. Um, and so it seemed like a nice idea to put this this record together. With so the idea is like sort of uh, delving into the David Jacobs collection then, yeah. some of his favourite tunes. Exactly that. We recorded the album live in concert. It was like a live version of the David Jacobs collection. That's that nice. was that was where we went with it. Um, and uh, the two singers that we've got with us this evening are on there, Eleanor Keenan and Matthew Ford. And it's it's doing quite well, you know, we're selling quite well and it's been played on the radio a fair bit and... Yeah, can't ask for more, really, can you? This is Gary Williams talking to big band leader and bassist Joe Pettit. Uh, we've got to go. We've got to wind things up because you've got to run out on stage very soon. I have, you? yeah. It's been great talking to you today. Thanks for taking the time out and have a great concert. Thanks, Gary. Thank you for listening to this Cabaret Secrets podcast. If you've got any comments or questions, please visit cabaretsecrets.com where you'll also find details of the Cabaret Secrets book, an indispensable guide on how to create your own show, travel the world and get paid to do what you love.